I once had to give a, this, I don't even know why I was asked this, I once had to give a security reference for a mate of mine who was um, uh, applying for DFAT. I don't know why you want me as a security <laughs> reference, but, um, uh, but I had to work out what lies he was telling so I could be consistent with them. Um, uh, yes, we've got to, we've really got time only for one more question. So, uh, That's you quite a lot of pressure. It um, is, yeah, yeah. And, and we, we've probably only got a few minutes, so I have to keep it relatively brief. Okay, well, my name's Lizzie and I work at Morris Blackburn in the social justice practice and I can confidently say that I love what I do and every day I feel proud to be uh, doing social justice type work and I think that that's something that's not just limited to me, it's probably a firm wide feeling and I just wanted to contest the assumption that's floating around that it's not possible to have a career that contributes to social justice in the law. Um, I think a lot of community lawyers would share that feeling as well. Maybe what we should be doing is encouraging the law students to not see their career as corporate practice with pro bono on the side. Maybe it's uh, becoming a, a lawyer who is dedicating their life to social justice. And that's one thing that I guess uh, flowed on from the point that I was originally going to make, which was... Litigation is not always the answer and it's worked for GetUp and it's been very successful but often I, my job is to say you shouldn't be litigating. There's things that you've got to do but litigation is not the answer and so maybe what we need is um, for activist organisations to learn from lawyers but for lawyers to learn from activist organisations as well and to become activists themselves. We have lots of skills, we can write, we can speak, most of us can write and speak depending on what your practice is but um, we have all those skills, we should be putting them to good use, we should be intervening into public debates whenever we possibly can, even if we're not acting on the case, and be the, the watchdog for respect for human rights, um, respect for ideas of justice and due process. That should be the job of lawyers, in my opinion, and maybe we should be training lawyers to have that as a constant um, you know, mechanism in their brains, that they are committed to those principles, that it's not good enough to say that you're an advocate and you can take on any case whatsoever, that there, there are some positions that are wrong and we should be challenging them and I think the Tampa case is a good example of that. So I'd be interested to know what the panel thinks about those thoughts. In short, I agree. So Lizzie and I kind of work together right. in that I uh, do bring cases to Morris Blackburn or I've had conversations so I can tell you she's, she's telling the truth uh, when, uh, uh, when she speaks with such passion. Uh, I, uh, while I, I mean, I obviously agree, um, I think what's really important here is the fact that when you get six years or whatever it is to become a lawyer of training, what you also get is a set of principles established within you so deep that you're going to believe in them forever. And so we need you to actually be standing up with those principles because when you speak, you speak with authority. In society, we turn to people who can speak with authority to help us move forward in a situation and lawyers have that authority because they have those principles so well established within them. Nick? And, I agree. and I thank Pilch for creating the opportunity for those of you who do have that to find something meaningful to deliver. I thank those of you who made the choice to go and work in organisations where you can actually do that every day and thank you for making that choice and thank you for the contribution you make. I thank those of you who then take the opportunity where you don't have that in every, in, in every opportunity to go and create art festivals or to create volunteerism or to go and do it in places and find it. So I agree and thank you very much. And though, there is more within the profession, probably not well reflected here. Look at the average age of the group and then look at the average age of the profession and that we can do to actually create real and significant change of the type that we've been able to hear about today. And I think, you know, so gently, I, yeah. I, I think that's the thing that I think is really worth us thinking about. How do we move along that? Yeah, the subtle evangelism of making um, other lo lawyers' lives more interesting. Um, <laughs> Well, uh, okay, look, unfortunately we've run out of time uh, and I say that mainly because we can stop talking and start drinking and eating. Um, but uh, thank you very much to all of you for coming and for engaging in uh, what I've certainly found to be an interesting discussion. Uh, thank, can we have uh, a thanks for all our speakers? <laughs> Nick and Simon. And of course to Fiona for, and Pilch for organising today's event. Thanks very much and let's have a drink. Yeah, just before you do that, um, on your seats you'll see um, a feedback form. You'll see You're a all going to Oprah. Sorry, no. That's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a free car. It would be really great to get your thoughts. Um, this has been about hearing what each other has got to say and I'd love to continue that. So please take a minute to fill out the form. Tell us what you thought. Give us your details. You'll see on the form... You can email us, change at pilch.org.au with some, any thoughts you might have. You can go to our website, 
pilsha.org.au slash change and there'll be a bunch of resources in a week or so the audio and video of tonight's event will be up and you can watch it again and see why um, Simon can watch it and see why he was so freaked out at the size of his head on the screen. Um, <laughs> we are talking with GetUp about ways that we might be able to collaborate with them and work more closely. If you're interested in hearing about how those conversations go, please write that on the form, indicate that. You might want to support our work. It would be great if you wanted to write that on the form and, um, and um, provide some support. You might want to join GetUp if you're not a member of GetUp already. So I guess what I want to do is create a little bit of time for you to think about a response. When I talked with Nick early on about tonight, he said, it's great, you're going to rev them all up, and then what are they going to do? So this is the beginning of giving you the opportunity to do something with, hopefully, um, what you're feeling as a result of this conversation. So please take um, a moment now um, to, just to fill out the form before you go and have um, a drink. Uh, and while you do that, I wanted to add my thanks to, to that of Julian. I want to thank the team at Pilch that helped me put th this together, especially Penny Morrow, Rachel Brown, and the wonderful Jess Easton. I want to acknowledge uh, DLA Phillips Fox, who have contributed to um, tonight financially. I want to add my big, big thanks to, um, to the speakers and to Julian for embracing this idea that I rang them about. None of them knew me really before I called them up and said, hey, this sounds like fun, don't you think? And they were really up for it uh, and, and did it for free pro bono. So thank, please thank them again. I didn't realise that. Yeah. So. <laughs>